Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome back on into another episode of the Bleed Blue Podcast. Once again, you can find us on Instagram at Bleed Blue Podcast and on Twitter at Bleed Blue, under, at Bleed Blue Pod underscore. A little bit different. Um, once again, all these episodes are going to be going up on YouTube. And I'm going to be posting clips on Instagram and Twitter. Um, so, yeah. And if you're on YouTube, yeah, go ahead and uh, give us a like, um, subscribe, and uh, give us a listen on Spotify or, or iTunes. And uh, let's get her going. We're, we're one game in. Hockey's back. Um, yeah, this is an exciting time. Technically, I mean, yeah, technically we're in first place. Uh, I think maybe, I don't know. Undefeated so far, baby. And the boys are off and flying. A couple thoughts on the first game. Um, I thought it was exactly what I expected, to be honest. Um, you know, no exhibition games. They go in. The game's a little sloppy. Um, there were... Uh, I know it's been a, made a big deal about how much turnover this team's had and how much change, you know, the bottom six looks a lot different. But like like I've been saying to a lot of people and throughout the podcast, right? If this team's gonna do anything, it's gonna be those big boys that top that carry them, those you know, that top those those big four, Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Nylander, um, you know, Freddie Anderson, Morgan Riley, T J Brody, and I thought all those guys played spectacular in the first night, like I expected them to, right? Um, the depth guys, like I didn't really notice too many of them. I liked, uh, oh, I see the Wayne Simmons fight. I've been excited about that. Um, I called it. Like, you knew Toronto boy is going to try and make an impact in his first game. Playing on the fourth line, like, it's probably going to be through fighting or something. So there it was. And to the people who say they don't like fighting, I think that's so stupid. Um, I understand the, you know, the dangers and stuff in it. But, like, it's part of the game, right? You're never going to be able to, if there's going to be hitting in the game, there's going to be fighting to some level. The game has to police itself. Like those cross checks at the end of the game, right? Like I understand they're aggressive, and and I'm a, I'm as I'm a big as Matthew supporter as you can find, right? But it's like that's kind of the the price you pay going to the net, like last minute, and like, like there's like the last minute Matthews goes to the net and he gets a couple shots from Weber and Sherratt, right? Like that's gonna happen. That's the price of going to the net, man. And if they don't like it, like I've heard a bunch of people say, right? If you don't like it. All right, Zach Bogosian, you take your stick. It's not the same, of course, but you bury it into, into Suzuki's ribs when he comes back up the ice your way. That's what. That's my opinion, right? And so Simmons fighting, I think that shows that, you know, if you have Pierre Engvall in that spot, right, what's Pierre going to do? If he's not making an impact, he's probably just going to skate around and not do anything. But you got Wayne Simmons in there, and he's not making an impact on the score sheet. So instead of just skating around doing nothing, he drops the gloves. And then he looks directly at that bench and screams at them to fire him up. So I think if you if you honestly believe that that didn't have an, some sort of an impact in waking that team up and getting their attention, I think you're wrong. Um, yeah, so I think that's huge. But other than that, like I thought McKay have played well. Um, that third line, that shutdown line, like I didn't think they were great. They were okay in the third. Keith, today he's praising them. This is Friday. He's praising them at practice. No line changes going into the Ottawa game tonight, just so we know. Um, so, yeah, he's going to give that lineup another run, the same lineup. I didn't think Bogosian played very well, to be honest. I didn't think Justin Hall or Jake Muzzin played very well. But Muzzin mixes in a game every now and then where he's not very good. So, hopefully, he bounces back. But, yeah, I thought Morgan Riley and TJ Brody were fantastic. Um... A little bit of speculation I've seen online of whether Brody should be on that second power play. I I don't know. As long as he doesn't hurt, yeah, I don't think he's terrible there. Um, but yeah, I thought they played really well. I think TJ Brody's a great partner partner for Morgan Riley. I thought they moved the puck out well, especially with that Matthews line. Um, Thornton playing over 17 minutes. I don't know how thrilled I am about that. Um, oh, I think, yeah, you got to get him ready for the year, but I think those numbers are going to have to go down if this team wants to be effective. You're going to have to find someone else to play some of those minutes with Matthews and Marner. And you're going to have, like, the, the fourth line played about five minutes, right? You're going to have to, you got to get a fourth line that can play, right? So I don't know if that involves putting more speed in or letting Barabanov get accustomed to the league or what, but, you know, you can't be running Matthews and Marner 25 minutes a game, right? Like, so they got to get that straightened out. I think that third line is going to be better. They're getting another shot in Ottawa tonight. Um, and yeah. The main thing I want, like, people, 
uh, I think we're going to see some lineup changes this weekend. I know Sheldon's saying that we didn't have exhibitions. you got to give this lineup a run. He's thinking He was like, thinking about making line changes. But I think this weekend with the back-to-back, -back, right, I'm pretty sure we're going to see Campbell on Saturday night. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see some shuffling around, right? I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, Miko getting into a game, Miko letting in on the back end to see if you can't get him something, right? I'd like to see Nick Robertson and Sandine come in. I don't know if you can do that. I don't know how the taxi squad situation is set up, but if you can maneuver around that, I think that would su would be super effective. Um, but yeah, Freddie Anderson, uh, I thought, uh, how do I put this? Yeah, there's some soft goals, right? First game of the year, Freddie hasn't really faced like true opposition game. And and yet, listen, it's going to be like shinny. I don't know how long. I think, like I've said, I think the team that can figure it out defensively in this division is going to be the team that in the end wins it. Um, but I think it's going to be like shinny hockey. There's, we're going to see these 5-4 games, like these shoot. Like It's going to look bad on the goalie, but a couple of the goals on Freddie were soft. Didn't love the Tatar goal going through his legs, but that might just be an early season one. And then the Anderson one going under his arm, but it wasn't great. But I, if he can tighten that up, right, like that's good. And, and I think the big thing is, right, like in the third period and overtime, he, he he made a big save when he needed to, right? And that's kind of been the my criticism of him in the playoffs and whatnot is when it seems like they need a big save or just a save, right? Sometimes he hasn't been able to give it to them. And I know it's just one game in, um, but he was he was providing them with with that big save going down the stretch um, on, on Wednesday night. And I think that's big, right? If he can continue to do that um, and the team keeps winning, like, yeah, you're going to let in softies. But I think the main thing is, right, if you can give this team a save when they need it, um, it keeps life in the in the team's legs, and and they may be able to respond to it, right? They did it last night. He made some big saves down 3-1, and, and there you go. They come back 3-3 three, three, and then 4-3, come back again, and make some big saves in overtime that, you know, the breakaway stop and then that uh, one-timer save there in OT. So I think if he just I, – I don't know if it's a mental thing with Freddie or what. Um, I'm hoping the D looks better in front of him than they did in the first game, right? It wasn't – like, obviously – um, it wasn't great, and they're going to need some time. But I don't know. Bogosian didn't look great. And hopefully that's just, like, I'm, th I'm sure he just had a bad game. I'm sure he can play better than that. But it just, if he can't, if he if he doesn't pan out, right, like, we got we to gotta have people in this lineup that can play. We can't afford, the season's too short. We can't afford to have guys in the lineup where we're taking chances, waiting for them to, to start playing when it's like the season is almost halfway over and they have, and they've had their finger up their ass the whole the whole season, right? So, um, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be better. You see, we saw a lot of the issues that plagued the team last year come out in that first game, and that's just they haven't been playing right. Like I think I think I'm hopeful. It's been this is five years now, but I'm hopeful that they can start to lock it and tighten it up defensively, right? Um, but, you know, they start running around and, and doing that stuff in their own zone where they look silly and they get hemmed in. And the Habs are a good forechecking team, right? Like, like that's what their game's built on, so they're going to do it. But I think the Leafs will be able to tighten it up. They've got to break the cycle. I thought the, the Matthews line was breaking out cleanly. But other than that, I didn't think they were great in their own end. Um, but the, I think the story of the night, obviously, was uh, Willie Nylander just popping off. Um, two goals and an assist just looked fantastic um, and I think he's gonna have a big year man I listen at when he had the down year and the, the whole contract year and then the playoffs he almost scored basically scored in his own net and that was low for for Nylander right and everyone's like they got to get rid of this clown this bum you know all this stuff and I said like listen I know he had a bad year he, he's obviously not that bad it's like something the contract whatever like, he's not that bad. He wasn't that bad. He just, he was off. And obviously, he didn't come in through halfway through the season. It was stupid. <clears throat> it happened. But, I, you know, he was, he's not that bad. And everyone's saying, we got, they got to trade or get this fucking guy out of town. Like, get rid of him, whatever. And I was saying, like, you're selling this guy for pennies on the dollar. Like, that is just not smart. That's not the move to do. Um, and... I'm glad they held on to him, right? I thought he was popping off last year. I thought he had a great year. Tavares didn't have a great year, but I do remember at one point he was playing with Kerfoot and Nylander, and they were flying. 
and they were playing well, and Nylander was playing well. So I'm glad they're keeping Nylander with Tavares, and it showed in that first game. He played well, and he scored, like, the the first goal, seeing eye shot, whatever, you know, Carey Price. That second shot, to pick the corner like that on Carey Price and to, to recognize Edmondson doesn't have his stick, so he's not going to attack. He, all he can do is play your body or block the shot, so to... To take your time and walk in like that and use him as a screen and just rip it top corner on Carey Price like that is, I mean that's a, he's a special player man like there's a reason he's he's in that same like he's not in the same breath but he's mentioned in the same four as Matthews Marner and Tavares right he's not a he's not a slouch and I think that contract's looking good and I think he's gonna have another really good year like I think if he rides shotgun with Tavares all year. You know, he's going to get his cookies passing to Tavares, obviously, because Tavares can put the puck in the net. But he's also going to score a lot, man. He's got a good shot. He's he's shown it through the scrimmage in the first game of the year that he can shoot the puck still. You know, Bill Nye, Bill Nye the wrist shot guy, as a bunch of people call him. But, uh, fun little name. But, yeah, I think he's going to have a good year. So I think this is all leading up to, uh, we're playing Ottawa this weekend. You know, Matt Murray between the pipes for the Sens. Stutzel will be playing on the second line. I think, keep your eye on Tim Stutzel. I know it's a Leaf podcast, but that guy has got a chance to be rookie of the year. Um, I might pick him up in my fantasy league, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. He could score me some points if he's playing on that second line. Who knows, maybe at some point he winds up playing with, with Kachuk, and I think, you know, Thomas Shabbat's going to get his points as well. I think Ottawa could be a pain in the ass, so the Leafs cannot come in taking taking this lightly, right? Like they're gonna they they've always played Toronto hard in the past, and I think they're gonna do it again. Um, I'm I'm sure, yeah. Fred's starting tonight, so I would as and Sheldon's hinting you're gonna see Campbell tomorrow, but he can't, I don't think can't, he's hinting at it, and I don't think you're gonna see Campbell on the second half of back to backs every time like Babcock did. Um, Keith showed. I don't know if he did it out of spite last year or what, but he sh he did start uh, Hutchinson, I think, and I'm sure he did with Campbell. I don't know if Anderson was hurt, or, but he would start them on front ends of back to backs. So he, he I I think he he's gonna mix it up and just go and see how the team's playing. And I and honestly, I think it's gonna depend on which goal he's playing well because, like I said, we don't have time to let someone find their footing, right? If someone's playing well, they must be playing. doesn't matter at this point. But yeah, Ottawa, they can't be taken lightly, and I think the Leafs got to go in. They got to they gotta do their thing. Um, they need to tighten it up. They need to, I hope they would, I will hope, right? It's not going to look perfect. They have not had exhibition, so it's gonna, probably going to take a week or two for this team to really start, like, jiving. But I would hope, right, you want to see improvements on the last game. So I would hope it's it looks better than the Montreal game. Um, defensively, mainly. Um, and I would like to see more out of that third line, and I'd like to see more out of the fourth line. Hopefully, the Leafs can build up like a bit of a lead so that they can get those lines out on the ice more um, and get them acclimated. And I, I, I would hope to see uh, Nico Lettinen on Saturday night, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, like I said, Ottawa's not to be taken lightly, but they also, they're not Montreal, they're not Vancouver or any of the other six teams in the country right like i'm pr it's pretty consensus ottawa's probably not the best team they're rebuilding considering where they are in their rebuild i think i'd like to see let just let's see what he can do right brady kachek's gonna for check for check him hard so let's see let's throw him in there on saturday night and let's see how he does right if he doesn't do well then maybe he maybe he's a cali rosen maybe he's you know one of those guys where it's just you know it just it turns out to be nothing, but it could be something, right? And I understand we Sheldon hasn't liked what he's seen through camp um, and in the scrimmage, um, but I think you're gonna have to give him a shot, right? Like, like let's see what he can do against some NHL talent. Ottawa's not the best NHL talent, obviously, but it's NHL caliber. That's not your own team, nonetheless. Let's see if he looks tentative. What? So I, that's that's something I would like to see. Um. So yeah. That's it. Um, again, if you like us, or if you don't even, anyways, give us a follow on uh, Instagram, uh, at Bleed Blue Podcast, and at, on Twitter, at Bleed Blue Pod underscore. Give us a like, subscribe, and uh, let's go. Hopefully we have a big weekend, and I'll be checking in with you guys on Monday. Take it easy.